Are y'all excited to be here? Yay! Today's a very special day. If y'all don't mind, can we stand up? Let's give God the glory this morning. He deserves it today. I want to welcome everybody for being here. Um, it is an honor, it is a blessing um, to be here at Life Church, just honoring and worshiping our, our Lord. Matthew 28, 6 says, but he is not here. He has risen from death. That is something to just give God the glory, just give him the worship, the honor. I don't know about y'all, but it is an exciting moment to just to be here. So I don't think that was a little bit loud enough for him. Let's get crazy for him. Let's get excited. Let's shout. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So just, I just want to welcome everybody. Thank y'all for being here. If y'all just, y'all can sit down and just watch a quick video. I believe in Jesus, the firstborn of all creation, the prelude to Adam, author of Genesis Reason, the husband of the newborn bride. I believe earth is one of his love's brightest beacons. I believe in Jesus, the infant king, ruler of the heavens, the universe's spring, and yet he took the frailest of forms, the weakest of things, for our mighty God was not too proud for the stable and trough of Bethlehem's sting. I believe in Jesus, the forgiver of men. Since man would not come to God, God came to them. Though we spit in his face through our arrogance and sin, holiness still became flesh so that it might be forgiven. I believe in Jesus, the perfection of the law, for creation was doomed by the requirements it scrawled. But he came not to abolish correction, but succeed where we did fall. And then he wrote a new law on our hearts. Love God and love all. I believe in Jesus, the horribly betrayed. Unknown by the world he himself had made. Handed over to death by a follower to whom some silver was paid. Disowned by a friend three times in one day. I believe in Jesus, the ever-turning cheek. No sword in his hand, he took the way of the weak. Redefined strength as beaten and meek. When men struck him on his back, only forgiveness did he speak. I believe in Jesus, the servant on the cross. To save the lives of the sinful, he considered his own life lost, endured the torture of men, whips and nails in his flesh were embossed, received the righteous wrath of God, the judge bearing our judgment, the ultimate cost. I believe in Jesus and that flesh in the tomb. You see, he bore the end of a normal human as he was born of a human's womb. He died a criminal's death and was buried in some other man's room. God, the Son, lay dead, the lifeless groom. But I still believe in Jesus and the body of his resurrection. 
for he redefined life in death's final rejection as he showed holes in hands to over 500 of his own selection so that humanity would not be able to raise an objection to the fact that Jesus Christ is God the Son and has made the ultimate connection. So I believe in Jesus and the commissioning of his ascension. For he ascended to God's right hand forever in intercession, leaving his truth in the hands of a few, those first to be called his Christians. His hands and feet are now the church, his boundless, reconciling expression. This is our heritage. They are our relatives. And this, this is our confession. We believe in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Let's all stand to our feet to worship, to praise the name that is above every name. Jesus.
shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my dream Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my time Till I met you You called my name
Hallelujah. Isn't God good? We serve a living God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. You can have a seat. You can have a seat this morning after you greet that person next to you. Tell them, wow, you look good this morning. Some people don't want to lie in church. All right, that's good. But no, we thank y'all for being here, everybody that's also watching online. Uh, it's just a wonderful day of, of celebration, knowing that we, we worship and we serve a living, risen king this morning. I'm going to be praying for the needs this morning. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Jeremiah chapter 33. And I'm going to read uh, a few verses here, and I think we've heard uh, these verses before, but I just want to kind of put some context around the situation that Jeremiah finds himself in. In Jeremiah 1, it says, While Jeremiah was still confined in the courthouse of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great unsearchable things you do not know. Now, it's interesting, and this, uh, this chapter is talking about the restoration of Judah of Israel. Um, Jeremiah finds himself, though, confined. He's been kicked out of the, of the temple and now is uh, confined. But his confinement doesn't limit him to access to God. Regardless of what situation or circumstance you may find yourself in, whatever trouble may be that you're facing, maybe, maybe you have to make a decision that may change your life, Whatever it is, God tells us to call upon his name. And so we hear Jeremiah that even though he's restricted, even though he, he's not free from his situation, he's not free from his circumstance, God is saying, call unto me and I will show you the way. And it's not only talking about the restoration of, of Israel. It's not talking about uh, the restoration because if you continue to read on that chapter, uh, you, you discover that, that uh, the towns and the cities and uh, everything's been destroyed. And how many times in our lives do we face trials and tribulations where we think everything's just destroyed? We just think that there's no way around the situation or no hope in that situation that I'm in. Uh, but, but God is reminding Jeremiah, it doesn't matter the situation you're in. If you call upon me, I will hear you. And so whatever problem you may have, whatever situation you may have, uh, it's, a, it's a promise for healing. If you continue to read that chapter, God promises healing and restoration. Some of y'all maybe need to be restored uh, back to the Lord. Some of y'all maybe need healing, physically healing. But it doesn't just stop there. Yes, we need to call upon the Lord for all our troubles and all the things that we face. But if you continue to read, and that's why we're here this morning, God is promising not only the healing that we need and the, and the restoration of a nation, but he's also promising that there's always going to be a, a king sitting on the throne of God. And that king is Jesus Christ. And that's why we're here this morning. We're here to celebrate his resurrection, regardless of what problems we're having, regardless of the challenges that we face in life. If we learn to call upon the name of the Lord, God will restore. God hears us. I know sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it seems like we cry out to the Lord, and it just seems like he doesn't hear. Anybody ever experienced that? But if we continue, if we continue to cry out to the Lord, God is looking to reward those that are diligent, in spite of the circumstance you may find yourself in. So this morning, whatever challenge it is that you may have, there is hope. I said there's hope, and that hope is, is found in Jesus Christ. So whatever your need is, and the other thing about this challenge is God says, call up upon me. So if you're expecting, uh, if you believe in the promises of God this morning, he's just waiting for you to call upon his name. And he will hear you and he will listen to you. So let's bow our heads this morning. Whatever uh, challenge you have or trouble you have or problem you have, this is the moment that you can bring it to the Lord for him to hear you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. In your word, you says that you told Jeremiah to call, call upon your name and you will show him some great and mighty things, Lord. And that also applies to us as your church, God. We call upon your name through the blood and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have access to the throne of God because of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, Father, there are many uh, that may be facing tough challenges, maybe physical challenges, maybe health challenges, maybe relational challenges, God, maybe financial challenges, uh, maybe family challenges or challenges at work. 
Maybe there's a storm in their lives right now that they're experiencing, God, that there just may not seem a way out, Father. But, God, we come before you because you've called us to come to you, Lord. As you, as you instructed Jeremiah to call upon you, Lord, we are calling upon you. Those that believe in your Son as their Lord and Savior, Lord, we call upon you, God, to, to give us peace even in the storm, to intercede uh, uh, on our behalf, God, and to move, Lord, and to hear us, Father, and to show us your hand, Father, that only you, Father, can make and that on, only that you can change, Father. In, in your word, in, in Romans 8, 28, says that God causes all things together, work together for good for those that love him and those that are called according to his purpose. Lord, I believe this room is full of people that love you. I believe, God, there's, uh, this room is full of people, Father, that, that, that uh, live for you and, and, and worship you truly in their hearts, Father. And because of that, Lord, would you just hear their hearts? Would you just hear their needs, Father? And not only hear their needs, Father, but also fulfill their prayers, Lord, as your will is done. We thank you. And we love you and thank you, God, for the privilege of being here this morning that we can just lift our hands up and worship freely this morning. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hello. Okay. So Lifeline Youth has a skit that we prepared for you guys today. Hi, I'm Ace Reporter reporting to you live from every place. And today I'll be interviewing people on what they think about Easter. Hey, what do you think about Easter? Um, chocolate rabbits, hunting for eggs, and lots of candy. What about Jesus? Ma'am, can you tell me what you think about Easter? Well, brand new dresses and brand new shoes, of course. I think I look better than probably 85% of all the women at the church, maybe 90. What about Jesus? Can you tell me what you think about Easter? A glorious feast completed with ham, pies, and cakes. What about Jesus? Can you tell me what you think about Easter? Resurrection and the promise of eternal life. Finally. <laughs> Finally, someone who understands the true meaning of Easter. Who are you, sir? I think you know. Okay, that was it. <laughs> well, they were talking about Easter, and um, they were in Sunday school class, and one of the teachers asked, oh, what can you tell me about Easter? And the little girl gets her hand up and says, uh, uh, is it uh, is it when you put costumes on and um, you know and go asking for candy? And she said, "No, that's Halloween." So the other little boy get, raises his hand and he says, um, uh, "Is it when uh, you have fireworks?" And she says, "No, that's Independence Day." And then the other little girl raises her hand and says, "Is it is it when Jesus was buried and and resurrects?" And she says, you're right, you did it, yes. Tell me more. And she says, well, he resurrects every single year. And when he comes out, if he sees his shadow, it'll be six more months of winter. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we really need to know what, e what, what resurrection day is. Amen. Powerful. It's wonderful. Well, I'm so glad you're in the house of the Lord. God is so wonderful, precious. Amen. And I, I just want to thank you for uh, making this day a special day, coming here to the church. Uh, just real quickly, just have some real quick announcements. As soon as service is over, hopefully you can go. If you want to go home, you can go home and get changed. But we're going to go right across the street, and we're going to have a wonderful time. We're going to have something to eat. Uh, all of us eat, right? Amen. So we want you to stay. Join us. Uh, we're going to have volleyball. We're going to have games for the kids. We're just going to have us a wonderful time. We're going to have music. And they're going to, there are some people that are going to be being baptized. They're going to be baptized today. So we're going to have us a wonderful time. So come join us immediately after the service. I promise that I won't make a, a, a long sermon. We, uh, but I want us to get together right immediately after. And we want you to partake of what God is doing. Amen. And also, just a, just a quick reminder that next Monday night, not, not tomorrow, but 
Uh, next Monday night, we have our night of worship. It's really important. The night of worship is when we gather together here at this church. We come together, we worship, and we pray. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful time. Also, uh, I want to encourage, uh, if you uh, don't know anything about or maybe you have not registered, May uh, 17th at 6 p.m. here at our church, there will be a simulcast, a marriage simulcast that will be from Dallas, and we will be having it here at our church. Our church is one of the churches that was selected in Abilene. And so we're asking if you are married, and uh, you don't have to be having problems, but if you want a better marriage, uh, some of you may be engaged, uh, ready to get married. Uh, and so we will be having a simulcast. It's $15 per person, and of course that's for you to register. We want you to come and be part of it. We, if you see there, uh, Francis and Lisa Chan will be uh, our uh, guest here, simulcast. Uh, I don't know how many of you ever heard of Michael Jr., the comedian. He is hilarious. And, of course, we have uh, uh, Les and Lisa Parrott that are also going to be here. So we want, we want you to come and be part of this. It's important for you to make plans to do that. You can go online, and if there's any other questions, you can call the office also. But you can go online and even get registered for that. And also, I want everyone to pray. Uh, if God is leading you to help us out, we are uh, at the end of this month of April. No, 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 I may. I'm sorry, I may. We are having a bikeathon. I I have made a commitment, and I'm challenging everyone. There, we have some, several riders that are going to be riding the bike. We are raising, uh, we are raising uh, money for uh, BGMC, which is Boys and Girls Missionary uh, Challenge, as well as we are raising money for Speed the Light. It is for missions, and our goal is five thousand dollars. And uh, I, you know, I just. I made this commitment that I would ride my bike. I've, I've ridden my bike uh, from Lubbock all the way over here. It takes, has taken me two days. Um, and so I thought I was at it again. I hadn't done it in about a couple of years, two, couple of years, two or three years. We got real good bike riders here. But uh, I did it about, uh, about three years ago or so. But now I realize I'm a little older. And so I thought that Lubbock was a little too far. So as pastor, I can change it, and I changed it from Snyder. Instead of two days, one day, amen. And as the days go by, if, I get, if it gets worse, I hope I challenge myself from Ty here, amen. <laughs> but we're going to have us a good time, amen. And we're asking for you. You can get a free T-shirt. If you give $25 to, to missions, you can get a free T-shirt. I didn't bring it with me, and you can find that out at the Welcome Center or call the offices. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. We're going to give to the Lord. And I was, uh, I wanted to read a portion of Scripture, the opportunity that we have to give to the Lord. Um, why is it that we give? Why is it that we give? And if you go with me to Luke chapter 6, if you have your Bibles, I know it's kind of hard to read but because you're in the dark there, but I promise you, there you go. Let there be light. Amen. Um. In verse 38, it says this, real easy and real simple. It says, give, and it will be given. That every time that God asks, and I want everybody to pay attention here, because every time that God asks you for something, it's because he wants to give you something. Did you hear what I said? Every time that God asks you for something, it's because he wants to give you something. God never asks to take away from you so that you cannot have but he's always asking so that you can get so that you can get because it says the bible says give and it shall be given and look what it says this is how he gives it a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure that you use it will be measured to you pressed down in good measure shaken together running over hey god knows us God knows us. How many of you, when, and I like to talk about lunch around this time because it was almost noon, but when you go to the buffet and you, you pile on that plate, on that buffet, as if you were not going to go back again. And I mean, you pile, what do you do? You pile it on, right? And when we go for, for anything, when we, we, we can get more, we will try to get more. When we go try to fill up our, our, ta our, our, our vehicles with gasoline, you know, we click and we're, if we're going to pay we're going to play and then it clicks and then we kind of pull it out a little bit and we we're trying to get as much as we can and then this is what we do we 
We want everything. And you know what? God already knows us. And you know what he said? He said, if you give, I'm going to do that to you. I'm going to give you an abundance. I'm going to give you more than what you've asked for. And I believe that. Now, there are seven things real quickly why I give. I give because God's given me. God's given me life. God's given me a wonderful family. God's given me a beautiful wife. God's given me a home. God's given me a job. God's given me so much. That's why I give. The second thing I give is to please God. How many know that if God is happy, God will provide things in our life? I give because I want, to, I want God to be glorified. I want Him to receive the glory in everything. I give because I want to be obedient to His Word. If the Word says to give, then I want to be able to give. I also give because I want to honor God. I want to respect Him and honor Him. I want to give so that my heart may be right. You know what the Bible says? That wherever my, my treasure is, that's where my heart will be. I want it right. And the, the last one is, I give because I love God. Did you know that when you're in love, you'll do anything with that person that you're in love with? If it's your grandbabies? Huh? How many grandparents know that when you go into the store, you're not even thinking about anybody else but about the grandbabies? And they say, oh, look how cute. This is where they don't even need it. We get home and the kids go, Mom, Dad, why did you do that for? Because we love them. Amen? And uh, we love God. Let God bless you today. I'm going to ask the ushers to come as we, uh, as we pray. But here's the thing. We've got a special uh, we, uh, dance that they're going to perform today. And I'm going to ask the ladies if they would come and they get ready as we pray. Bow your heads. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity that you give us. We pray at this moment that, God, that you see our hearts. This church cannot go on if people are not able to give. And I say that you bless them. Let them know that they've been able to be a blessing. Thank you for this wonderful church because they're able to give in every aspect. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, amen. Enjoy. Nombre Santo. 
Amen. He's holy in this place. I just want to invite you guys to stand up this morning. And let's just praise his name because he is so holy and he is so worthy of all of our praise.
Everybody say, Amen. greet the person next to you and tell them, don't fall asleep now. We're almost done. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Hey, what a blessing, huh? All these musicians that we have up here. Praise the Lord for that. Glory to God. Well, I want to I wanna be able to give just a little bit of time. I'm excited about this afternoon. Uh, part of that, I pray to the Lord that you stay that you uh, kind of come and eat with us, and, and so we can uh, just, we're going to have a wonderful time. Amen. So we're going to even have games, and we're going to have music up there, uh, out there, and it's going to be wonderful. What a time of celebration. You know, yesterday, I was driving by all the, uh, I was driving by Sears Park, and there were so many people already celebrating, and, uh, uh, and they were playing volleyball, they were doing all kinds of stuff, and that's what we're going to do today. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 28, I want to just take a few minutes that I want to share with you the word of the Lord, and I pray to the Lord that you be receptive today of what God has in your life, amen, for your life, and uh, we want you to go to Matthew chapter 28, and I want to read the, the uh, chapter, or chapter 28, verse 1 through 6, and we are talking about the resurrection, and there's a, something that happens here that I want to kind of uh, share with you this morning. And it says, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 6, it says, After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went in, uh, to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel of the Lord said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He said, He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Now I want to make emphasis in verse 6, and it says, He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Now, I have, a, I have a rock here. Let me get it over here. I have a piece of rock. It's all right. And uh, this rock is up here. I have a small and a big one. The small one is for the further, to throw farther away to the one that's falling asleep. And the one, this one is the one that's in front falling asleep. Amen. 
But uh, I have a, a rock here because, you know, in the, in, uh, uh, in the 1970s, whoo, the 70s, um, there was a commercial uh, that was the Prudential Insurance in the late 70s. You're going to realize that the, the quality of the, of, of the TV or the commercial wasn't that great like we have today. But, I, I, you know, the, I want to talk to you about get a piece of the rock. And I, I want you to see this commercial. It's hilarious. Just, just see if you can see it. Prudential life insurance because of a dusty painting. There you are, and look at this funny old painting. Oh, the artist's name begins with P. P I C. P I C. Picasso! Picasso! It's probably worth a hundred thousand, a million more. <laughs> we'll be able to buy that little retirement cottage upstate. <laughs> little cottage? We'll be able to buy upstate. Prudential wishes your wildest dreams come true. The artist's name is Pickleman. Pickleman? It's a Pickleman. <laughs> but for something you can really count on, get a piece of the rock. Prudential Life Insurance. It can help take care of your family, even if you are not around. And it can also help take care of your retirement. For Life Health Auto Home. Get a piece of the rock. You know, that was that, you know, and as you start looking at the commercial, the whole thing about the commercial was that they wanted you to see if you could invest in that company. They wanted you to get an insurance policy. They wanted you to be able to have a foundation and a strong foundation in your future and become a policyholder. But I don't want to really talk about that rock. I want to talk about another rock. And uh, what the rock I want to talk to you about is that it's not about insurance, but it's the rock that was placed to cover the entrance of the tomb. Now, we know that Jesus is the rock, but the rock that I want to talk to you about is this one, because it was placed in front of the tomb of Jesus Christ. And the reason why it was placed in front of the, of the tomb of Christ was because it was a place, it was placed there for security reasons. It was placed to seal the entrance so that no one could go in and try to snatch the body or do anything with the body. It was secure. Now, the stone was very large and heavy, and it was probably very difficult for anybody to go in and try to steal the body. Now, as we begin to study the Bible, the Bible tells us that after the death on the cross, it was, uh, it was right prior to the Sabbath. And the Bible tells us that there's a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph. He was a disciple of Jesus. Also, he was a follower of Jesus. Now, he wasn't one of the 12, but he was a follower of Jesus. And he goes before Pilate, and he asks for the body of Jesus Christ. Now, Joseph, after he was given permission, took the body, wrapped it in a cloth, and placed it in the new tomb that he had bought. And he rolled the stone in front of the entrance. Now, there's a concern. Because of the fact, the concern is this, that the... the the Pharisees uh, and the, uh, well, the Pharisees and all the religious leaders, they remembered one thing about Jesus. They remembered that he had said that in the third day he would rise again. On the third day that he would rise again. The disciples didn't even think about it, but they did. And so all of a sudden they go to Pilate and they give, they ask this thing. They say, would you do this favor? He said, before there is a deception worse than the first one, they're the disciples, and we're afraid that uh, we remember what Jesus said. Jesus said that in the third day, he would rise again. He says, so can you secure it? Can you go and secure it so that the disciples don't go in and steal the body and then start telling everybody that he is risen? So Pilate then orders to post guards there, and he places a seal on the tomb. Now, there are three things that secure the, the tomb. And I want you to stick with me because it's very important to realize that a stone that was placed in front of the tomb was a reason. And you know that some of you here today, there is a stone that has been rolled in front of your life that doesn't allow you to go forward and be resurrected. Now, the tomb was secured in three ways. Number one, this large stone was rolled against it so that no one could go in. The second thing is they put a Roman guard, a unit of four soldiers, to make sure nobody would ever try to move it. And thirdly, the Roman seal was attached to the stone. 
Now the seal, the seal stood in for the power and the authority of the Roman Empire. If anyone went in there and tried to break that seal, automatically they would be sentenced to death. So in other words, they were really trying to secure that Jesus would not rise again. But you see, Jesus mentions three times to the disciples that he's going to rise again. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that that would be kind of hard to understand, even today. How could someone that would be, be put to death rise again in three days? Well, Jesus mentioned it to the disciples. Yet it never stuck to the disciples, but it did stick to the, to the enemies. Now, he said, he mentioned to them, I would rise again. But there are three things that he says when he says that I will rise again. There are three things. Number one, it was prophetic. Jesus Christ began to prophesy of himself that in three days he would rise again. The second one, that he proclaimed it. There was a proclamation saying, listen, I want everybody to listen. I'm proclaiming to everybody that in three days I'm going to rise again. The last one was that he declared it means that he not only said it, but that was the final decision. No one could change it, that he was declaring that in three days he would rise again. That is so powerful to realize that here's Jesus prophesying of what was going to happen. Secondly, he was proclaiming it so that people would hear. And thirdly, he declared it, telling them that that is what is going to happen. There is no other change. Things are about to happen. So we realize that even in Joshua, if some of us begin to read in the book of Joshua, the Bible says that they get right to the to right to ready to cross over to the promised land, and all of a sudden God speaks to Joshua and says, I want you to prepare them because you're gonna lead them to the promised land, to the land that I'm giving them. Joshua turns around and tells his leaders, and he says, I want you to go to camp and I want you to tell them to get ready, get everything ready, because in three days we're gonna cross over. You see, it's, it's not only a proclamation, but it's a declaration of this is what is going to happen. I want you to know when Jesus mentions it, he prophetically says it, he proclaims it, and he declares it. In other words, let me share this. There is no punishment. There is no humiliation. There is no cross. There's no tomb. There's no grave. There's no rock. There's no guards. There's no king seal that could keep him in the grave. When Jesus said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And I don't know what he has said to you or what you've heard, but whatever the Lord has said to you, he will fulfill it. He is not a man that he should lie, the scripture says. Now, John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26 says this, I am the resurrection and life. He's not only going to resurrect, but he is the one that resurrects and gives everybody life. He's the one that resurrects people from the dead. He brought back to life many. Do you remember that he brought back in John chapter 11, he brings back Lazarus. Remember? Lazarus had died and he brings him back. He resurrects him. What about the widow of Nain's son when he was dead? They were having a funeral and Jesus goes there and he raises him from the dead. What about the daughter of Jairus? She had been dead. He goes there and he's able to lift her up where she's at. And there were many. Matthew chapter 27, verse 52 and 53, it tells us that once that, that he died, it says that, that the, the, the curtains were ripped apart in the temple. And it says that all of a sudden that graves were open and many came back to life. Can you imagine? That is what the Bible says. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Can you imagine someone that had been dead for a long time? Tia, tio. Grandma, grandpa, you know, they had been dead. La suegra, you know. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. And all of a sudden, they're there, they're alive. What happened? Because Jesus is the resurrection. Now, there's nothing that could keep Jesus in the grave. And there's nothing that can keep you down where you are. God has given you life so that you can live it in abundance. You see, the resurrection, it gives us the type of resurrection. That he gives. The Bible tells us that there was a violent earthquake. And the angel rolled back and sat on it. Rolled back the stone and he sat on it, indicating I have overcome it. I can roll away every stone that you face every single day of your life. And I not only can roll it away, but he can sit on it and say, I can declare to you that you have victory in Jesus' name. 
That's why we don't have any reason to be able to be held back and saying, I cannot do anything because God has made a promise in your life. The Bible tells us that the guards became fearful and became like dead men. Here are the guards that, that were supposed to be strong and they were military and they were men of valor and all of a sudden there is an earthquake and something happens that it paralyzes them and makes them helpless. That they're able to, as if they were dead, because the presence of God was so real. And then the angel speaks to the women that were there, and he says, it's not, he is not here. He has risen from the dead, just like he said. Listen, if Jesus said something to you, he will fulfill it. Now, it's not at our time, but it is at his time. He is the resurrection. Now let me tell you, let me, let me say this again. There is no punishment. There is no humiliation. There is no cross. There is no tomb. There is no grave. There is no rock. There is no guards. There is no seal that can keep him in the grave. It doesn't matter what you put. Now let me tell you this. There's nothing that can keep you down. If you have Christ in your life, he can raise you from whatever situation there is if you give him that opportunity. You see, just like anything else, the enemy will come and try to place us in a tomb and put a stone over it so that we are not able to function in our life anymore. That is the story of our lives. All of us have struggled. Now, let's, let, me, let me just kind of give you a breakthrough right here. Number one, it's like Jesus. Jesus was humiliated and punished. He was, he, he was, he was mistreated, but that didn't even keep him down. In this world, the Bible says that you're going to have struggles in your life. If there's anybody here that can raise their hand and say, I've never had a struggle in my life, I think that you might just be perfect. But I believe that everybody that is sitting here is either gone through a struggle in your life or, you're, or you're right now you are going through a struggle in your life. You see, that's the thing. That's the trick of the enemy. The whole purpose of the life of Jesus was to bring life. And the purpose of the Pharisees and the religious people was to bring him down. And they planned every single day what they could do to be able to shut him up and to be able to kill him so that the gospel wouldn't be spread out anymore. And that is the way that the enemy is with your life. Every single day you struggle. And what the enemy wants to do is that he wants to place you in a tomb and he wants to seal it with a rock so that you can say, it's done, it's over. He cannot do or she cannot do anything else. And so the Lord is saying, but I've come out of it. You can come out of it too. You see, we all have struggles in life. All your disappointments. I don't know about you, but maybe you're disappointed that you could have been better. You see... As my girls are older, man, I look back and I said, man, I wish I could have done better. I w if I could do it all over again, I would do it different. And I sometimes I'm disappointed with myself. I'm disappointed as a pastor sometimes. I'm disappointed as a father. I'm disappointed as a husband. I'm disappointed as a friend. All the disappointments sometimes can bring a person down. And the, somehow or another, the enemy will place them in a tomb and place a rock on it and say, you're done. You can't do anything about it. What about your delusions or, or discouragements? What about all these discouragements that you have? What about your failures and your mistakes in life? All of us have failed. All of us have made mistakes. You know, it's amazing that uh, all the things that we carry with us in our life and we try to change in our life, it's very difficult for us to try to do that, to make changes because of all the mistakes that we've made and we feel sorry. We, we can't even forgive ourselves because of all the things that we struggle with. And so you know what happens? Immediately what the enemy does is places you in a tomb and then he tries to tell you that you're, it's over. You cannot come out of it. You go through life with all kinds of things. But I'm going to let you know that if the grave could not keep Jesus, Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection. You know what John chapter, John chapter 14 verse 19 says? It says, because I live, you also will live. In other words, if Jesus can resurrect from where he's at, you can resurrect of any issue and problem that you may have. Because he says, if I live, you live. I give you life. Now, here's the thing. All our failures and our mistakes are in the past, and the Lord said, all those things can't keep you in the grave. Like Jesus, 
that rock becomes that, uh, uh, they place that rock in front of the, of the tomb. It's like an obstacle. I don't know about you, but we all have obstacles in our lives, chains that bind us. You know the chains that bind people for whatever, whatever it may be, whatever you are struggling with in your life, you're bound. Maybe of your past, maybe there's things in your life that you carry. And so you have to recognize this, you have to realize this. That even those fetters and those chains, they cannot keep you away from God. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 says this. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Did you know that you have, you have the enemy that is forming things against you so that he can place you in a tomb and cover it up and say that you have no future whatsoever? And there are people that will struggle every single day of their life. They struggle with their marriages. They struggle with their children. They struggle with life. They struggle with all kinds of habits. They struggle with all kinds of things. And there are, there are obstacles that are placed in front of them. And they have chains that have bound them. And they cannot go forward because of these chains. But nothing will stand in your way. There is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Did you hear that? It may be formed against you, but it's not going to prosper. There's another translation. It says, no weapon forged against you will prevail. Isn't it awesome? Listen, I tell you this all the time because we have several new people, uh, people that have uh, guessed and you've never heard this before, but I was so shocked. I, and I want you to understand, I was so shocked when I found out that not everybody liked me. I couldn't believe, I could not, me, me, look at me. I think I'm a nice guy. But I couldn't believe that all the people don't even like me. I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? I'm such a great guy. But I will always have people that dislike me for whatever reason. Whether because they like my beard or they don't like my beard. I'm short or I'm tall. No, I'm not tall. <laughs> whatever it is, people just dislike it. And you know, you may laugh, but I got news for you. There are people that don't like you either. Uh, they don't like you either for no reason. You, and you're such a good person, right? If you're a good person, come on, clap, the, clap. Come on, you're a good person. Yeah, see. I knew you were a good person. Can you believe it? People don't even like us. They'll do anything to try to bring disruption and destruction to your life. And the devil will use them, will use people, will use circumstances, will use all kinds of things so that he can place you in a tomb and put a stone over it and say, you're done. You're done. Your marriage is done. Your family is done. Everything is done. You will never amount to anything. You'll always be a drug addict like your father. You'll always be a drunk like your grandfather. You'll always never accomplish. You'll never finish school. You'll never do anything. You'll, you're, you're always hopping around. You'll never do anything. And it's done. And I got news for you. Jesus said that he lives, and because he lives, you live. There is no weapon turned against you that will succeed. There is no weapon turned against you that will succeed. Come on, weapons made to attack you won't be successful. You can walk around and say, God, thank you that I may be placed in a tomb and I may feel as if I don't have no hope. But I know one thing, that in three days, Jesus resurrected and today I myself can resurrect. I can get out of the mess that I'm in. Like Jesus, they placed guards in a seal of the king that would keep him in bondage and say, you are going to stay there forever. I mean, I'm going to tell you there's not a demon in hell. There's not sickness or enemy that can keep you down. If you have Christ in your life, you can get out of it and say, you know what? That stone can be removed today. Now, some of you have struggled and you've done everything. I'm going to tell you one thing. It doesn't matter. There's not a program that can change your life. There's not a church that can change your life. Did you hear that? There's not even a church. There's not even, there's not a religion that can change your life. Only Jesus can change your life. There's not even, not, not even members of the church that can change your life. There's not even a pastor that can change your life. Oh, good. I didn't hear in the Spanish service. I said that and there was, amen. Everybody said amen. Like, oh. That's why I like to preach to you guys. The other, for the other group, it's, uh, it's a little harder to preach. They're getting there. They're getting saved. Amen. 
You, th those are the th weapons made to attack us won't even be successful. Listen, everything that you're going through, it's all right. Jesus went through it. Jesus was humiliated. Jesus was beaten. Jesus was, he suffered. And they placed him in a tomb thinking that it was over. But oh, let me tell you that it's all in God's plans that you may be in a tomb and you may be placed there as if you have no hope whatsoever. But if Jesus can resurrect and that same spirit is in you, then you don't have to stay in the situation. That stone can be placed, removed so that you can go. There is no seal that the enemy can place that can determine this is who you are. Maybe my grandfather was a drunk, and maybe my dad was in jail, but that doesn't mean that I can be that way. I believe that God can seal me with the seal of his cross and the seal of his blood. There's not a seal of men or a seal of society can say this is who you are. Isn't it wonderful? Because everybody knows who you are. Isn't it, isn't it amazing how we seal, we put a seal on people? We never remember the name, but we remember what he does. It's that guy. Remember that guy. Remember that, remember that guy? He says, who, who, which one? That guy that lives in that corner house. He's always a liar. He's always lying. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. We don't even say him, but we know what he does. We seal him. We, people seal things on us, and they, they put a seal on us and say, oh, that's that crybaby. <laughs> oh, it's that, and we seal. You know what? There is not a seal. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter Whatever people, what, what people place on you or whatever the enemy says, there is no weapon that is going to be successful, that's going to succeed, that's going to prosper, there, that's going to prevail. You're going to be able to get out. All you need is to have a piece of the rock and, real, and let them know that it's that rock that was removed from my life. Now, Jesus said, because I live, you will also live. Because I live, you will also live. Did you hear that? Because I live, Jesus said, you live, 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 you live. Everybody lives. Amen. Listen, church. It's amazing how we realize that God, you know, the Bible tells us that the disciple, everything was so sad and everything was horrible because Jesus was in the grave. They didn't realize that Jesus had said, in three days I will resurrect. They didn't remember. Even the women that loved him and followed him the most, they were going expecting to be able to anoint his body. And when they get there, they realize the stone was rolled away. Listen, the Lord will roll away your stone. He will roll away that hindrance in your life. He will roll away those things that have hindered your life, that have changed you, that have changed you in your life. Now listen to this. It's because I live, you live. You know what he said to Lazarus? And I'm going to finish with this. He says to Lazarus, when he was dead, he says, come out. Isn't it amazing that Jesus didn't say, I want you to go inside and I want you to pull him out. Once he came out, he said, get all those filthy clothes, that smelly clothes away from him. But he, calls, he goes in there and he says, I'm calling you to come out. He was in the grave. And he said, I'm telling him to come out. That's what he's telling us. Listen. The other two, the widow's son and Jairus' daughter, when they were dead, you know what he said to them? Get up. Get up. There are the two things that we need to realize. That in the order for us to change our lives, there's two things we need to do. Come out of our situation and get up from our situation. Amen. You know what? There are people that love being in a bad situation. Listen, I, you know, they, I always say this. If you want to live a miserable life, it's because you want to live a miserable life. Oh, pastor, but you don't realize what they've done. No, I don't realize what they've done. But I know one thing, that you need to come out and get up and get out of that place that you're in and start moving forward because Jesus Christ has risen. He's given you the opportunity to rise from where you are. He's given you that opportunity to come out of that grave, out of that situation of saying, of being molded, of saying, I can't do it anymore, Pastor. I'm struggling. Then come out of it. Get out of it. 
quit feeling sorry for yourself and saying, well, nobody, you know, this is the way that I am. You know, it's amazing. All the Lord is saying, listen, I can get you out of it. Jesus proclaimed it. He, prof he prophesied over it. He proclaimed it and declared it and said, you know what? They can't keep me. They can't keep me. In three days, I'm going to get up. Three days, I'm going to reappear. You know what? The devil might, might have put us down. He, the devil might have done all kinds of things. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to get up from where I'm at. And I'm going to let God reveal in my life where I need to be. Listen, some of you, some of you, all you have to do is get out and get up and move forward. That's all. We're waiting for God. God, when are you going to do the miracle? And God is saying, I have. Move. God, you're saying, God, when are you going to move? And God said, I have. Move. Move. Get up. Do it. Now, this morning, right up here, I have some rocks. And I want you to get a piece of the rock. This rock is for you to take with you and remind you that whenever you're going through struggles in your life, you can have a piece of the rock and say, you know what? Huh. This rock used to be a larger rock and it was placed in front of my life, but there is no hindrance, there is nothing that can keep me in the situation that I'm in. I've got a piece of the rock to prove it. But it's all up to you. It's all up to you. Do you want to stay the way that you are? Do you want to live in the same situation that you are? Or do you want to say, you know what, I, I got to get out of it. And the only way is through Jesus Christ. Like I said, there's not a church. You can go to every church in this city. There's some great churches in this city. But there's not a church that's going to change your life. You can go, to, you can go wherever and say, you know what, I, 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 I know one thing that Jesus can change it. If he can move that stone, he can move that rock out of your way. Now here's the thing. I'm going to, I want everybody to bow your head and I want you to think about your life. Now there are two people, now I'm going to say this, there are two people you can, that you cannot lie to. You can lie to everybody else, you can fake everybody else out, but there are two people you cannot lie to, the most important people, and that is God and yourself. You know where you are you know exactly where you are in your life. You know that you are inside that tomb and you want to get out, and, but you don't know how. You, you've been locked in that tomb for so long. You've got these bad habits that keep driving you back. You've got, you've got this lifestyle somehow or another. You've got those friends that drive you back that you're not able to produce or go forward. There, there are things in your life that, you, that you're chained with, maybe with discouragement, maybe with things of the past, bad habits that have occurred in your life. But this morning, I want you to get a piece of the rock so that you can understand that that rock God removed so that you could rise again and live. He did it. And that's why we celebrate that there is nothing that can keep him in the grave. There is nothing that can keep him in the grave. Now, you can stay in the grave you can stay the way that you are or you can change and say, you know what? I want out of this. I'm, I'm tired of this. You can go home and be the same way or you can change today. I'm not asking you to join the church. All I'm asking you is let God change your life. Now I'm going to pray for you and you know your life. Father, I pray before I make this altar call and before people come and get a piece of this rock, I'm asking you today that you would touch the heart. Lord, there are, there are people here today that are struggling in their life. And don't let pride keep them from accepting you as their personal Savior. Don't let pride and don't let them continue to live in misery the way they've been living. They came to church maybe because somebody invited them. But they didn't realize that you were going to be speaking to their life. I ask of you today that you would do your will. And in the name of Jesus, I pray. Now, here's the thing. If you want, there's some rocks right up here, all over there, on here. We're going to get some more rocks. And I want you to come and get a rock and say, you know what, Pastor, I'm going to get a rock because I'm going to get out of this mess. And every time that I'm going through a hard time, this rock is going to help me recognize that, remind me that Jesus Christ removed that rock from me. 
I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to make it a general invitation. Why don't you come? Come and get it. Come and get it. And I want you to stand right up here. We're going to say a word of prayer, and then we're going to be dismissed. Would you come? Would you come? Everybody, I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you. If we can get some of these rocks. Yeah, if we can hand them out. There, there's some rocks. and Take them over there. Don't ask for me to throw you a rock because it's not a good idea. We're going to get everybody a rock. We want everybody to come. If you did, just keep coming. If we can just kind of move everybody, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. If we can get some people up here, that would be nice. If we can get up here. Come on up here. Guys from the Dream Center, guys from Dream Center, come on up here with us so we can give room more. There's so many. Everybody's coming. Come on, keep coming. We're going to get everybody rock. You guys, if you guys want to come and join us up here, it's up to you. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Don't worry. Don't worry. Come on up. Anybody else can join us up here. Come on. Keep going. Come on. We want everybody to come. If we can move as many people that way so that we can. We've got some rocks over here. Everybody get in. Make sure that we give rocks over here. There's rocks. These people are, you know, I was going to say these people are more stoned than these guys. But that's, no. not the, that's not the proper word to say. Amen. If we can just kind of come this way. Tell you what, sweetie, come on up here. You guys come on up here. Join us up here. So I need some, come on. Come join us up here. Come join us up here. We need more people. you did not get a rock, we're going to get you a rock. Amen? Okay, on this side, I know there's a lot of people on this side that did not get rocks. Raise your hand if you did not get a rock. Just raise your hand. Come this way, Joseph, right up here. There's one rock here. You know, this morning, I want to tell everybody, this morning, I, me and Lalo were picking up rocks to, to bring over here, and people were watching us, and they probably thought, look at those guys. They they're, they're, they're already used to hunting, all right. Yeah, we're gonna give. You, we're gonna get. It. If you don't have one, we're gonna get you one. We're gonna get you one. We want everybody to get one. Keep coming. If we can get some more over here on this side. Whoever wants this rock, they can have it. Amen. Keep coming this way so that we can move. There's room over. There. This is beautiful. And some of you that weren't able to come but you want to rock, hopefully we'll have enough. We still have more rocks? All right. You know, Prudential was talking about, the, you know, having security with us. Well, there's some more over here. Anybody need rocks over here? And those back there. Anybody else? Anybody there? Anybody else? Anybody get a rock? Everybody get a rock? You guys get a rock? Who needs one? Here's a good one. There you go. Everybody get a rock. Someone wants a rock over there, but I don't know. He may just throw that rock at somebody. But I want everybody. Everybody got one. Listen. Everybody get one? I know that maybe this rock is, oh, I could pick up a rock anywhere. But listen, I want you to keep this rock, and I want you to keep it in your car or wherever it is. Because all of us go through a difficult time in our life. All of us. And you need to realize that in reality, what the Lord has done is that he's pulled you out of that. And all you got to do is get up and get out of it. Now, there's some of you here that have come here for the very first time. You said, I've never accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. Like I said, you can go to church, but church won't change you. It's Christ in your life. Now, if there's anybody here that has never, has never said, Jesus, come into my life, I want you to raise your hand because we're going to pray for you. There's one. Somebody else. Anybody else that says, I've never said, Jesus, come into my life. There's another. Anybody else? Come on, don't be ashamed. You have. It's okay. We'll ask him again. Amen. 
Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, here's here's what I want everybody to pray with me because there's some that still. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me, all right? Heavenly Father, I come to you today asking you to forgive me of all my sins. Today, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Change me. Come into my life. Today, I proclaim you and I declare that you are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, here's what I want you to do. I don't know your life, and I'm gonna, I want you to give just a few minutes, and I want you to tell God, God, this is my issue with my life. I'm angry. I'm bitter. There's so many things that have happened in my life. I'm, I'm a person that things have happened in my life. I want to give them over to you because as of today, there is nothing that's going to keep me in that tomb. There's nothing that's going to keep me where I'm at because I'm about to live because you said that if you live, I live. Would you tell him that real quickly? Come on, I can't pray for you. I'll pray for you, but I want you to pray. Father, I pray right this very moment. I pray in the name of the Lord. Come on, everybody. I can't pray for you. I can't pray for you. Because death could not hold Father, I thank you for this wonderful people. And I thank you, God, for what they've done. And I pray that, God, they've come to this Lord, I just ask of you right now, God, I pray for every single person that God, that they would be able to come out of wherever they're at. That they would be able to say, oh, Lord, here I am. Lord, we just pray we take this rock. Lord, let it be signified that God, that the rock, it is a piece of rock telling me that nothing can keep me behind. That nothing can keep me bound. That nothing can keep me where I'm at. But I know that you live. And because you live, I live. Because you live, I live. Lord bless you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. celebrating. Do you have a song, brother, that we can all celebrate? With it? And we want you to greet somebody and tell them, listen, I'm free. I'm out of the tomb. Amen. Jesus was out of the tomb, so am I. I'm out of the tomb. Would you do that? Would you turn around and greet somebody and say, oh, I'm glad to see you. Hallelujah. And we want to see you right across the street. Would you do that?